Life is full of puzzles, like where do we go when we die, or what's up with this bullsh**? Likewise, video games are stuffed full of puzzles, but sometimes those puzzles we solve seem all too familiar. Often we see the same ones over and over again, making us think that designers are legally obligated to include these in every game ever. Here then are the seven types of puzzle that must be in every game by law. How does this work? Games are supposed to be about escaping the nightmarish truths of the real world, so why they insist on reminding us about rising water levels, we'll never know. But this isn't likely to change, as it's a cast-iron fact that every game must have a bit where you are ordered to raise or occasionally lower the water level in order to progress. Yo, you just need a little more water! Presumably, these puzzles are designed to make you think three-dimensionally, as they always involve changing the amount of water in the room in order to progress either upwards or downwards. Or perhaps it's simply the game developer's way of saying, look, we programmed in all this water physics, so you're damn well gonna look at it for 10 minutes. Either way, expect to spend a whole lot of time searching out and interfacing with the two stalwarts of water puzzles, valves, and of course, sluice gates. That did it. It's not gonna stay. Must be some way of keeping it in place. On the plus side, this might be the only chance you get all year to use the word sluice. Sluice! It just rolls off the tongue and into the heart. Water level puzzles can be satisfying to solve, giving a feeling of having mastered your environment and overcoming the inherent risk of drowning. Best of all, they usually feature a bit at the end where the water level goes up, lifting you with it, which is oddly satisfying. Some water puzzles, though, will push you completely off the deep end. Consider the case of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time's infamous water temple, which was basically one big water level puzzle. So frustrating that every single person who played it still wakes up screaming about iron boots and small keys and has to say the word sluice ten times to calm down. Sluice. 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 Of impressive villages back then. I know it impresses me. Upon first walking into an ancient tomb with a single shaft of light beaming down into it, you might think, ooh, this is ruddy mystical. However, upon walking into the 50th ancient ruin like this, your initial thought becomes, okay, so where's the first bloody mirror I have to bounce this off of? It seems like every ancient civilization in video games was obsessed with bending light through lenses and off shiny surfaces. So much so that every other security system is based off them. And some games seem entirely based off them. More light. Slight obsession with light here. Through a series of mirrors or crystals, it's up to you to line the beams of light up with a certain place on the wall or some kind of pattern. but some go a bit further, having you move a bunch of ancient mechanisms around to try and reflect a single beam across about 500 different mirrors. And some go further still, with you swivelling a bunch of machines while trying not to get murdered in the process. The other things these puzzles make me reflect upon is my life choices. What's most impressive about these puzzles is how ancient civilizations not only worked out how to physically channel light centuries before the invention of lenses or mirrors, but how to then use it as a means of manipulating the environment, like these platforms in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It makes us wonder what lost discoveries of physics we might unlock by properly studying these puzzles. But then again, we do need to uncover what this tomb has on offer after all that light bending. Now to find a way out of here. 
Yay! Now Lara can pick up double the twigs. <sighs> Weakest in the series. You might remember the brutal bleep test from gym class, the one where you had to outrun a beeping device to test your speed. I say you might remember it, I don't, because I passed out after bleep three. Well, high school never ends, it seems, because you can find similar tests of speed and stamina scattered liberally throughout the world of video games, in the form of timed puzzles which ask you to hit a switch or lever or whatnot, and then leg it from point A to point B before the clock runs out. <laughs> These switches force you to make up the distance to your target much faster than you would prefer to travel, just to make you sweat, seemingly. Get out, careful, Link! I cannot handle the sound effect for when you fall to your death. I just said I cannot handle it! These timed sprints also stick in the mind for the way they make very obvious any minor vagaries in the way a game handles. A quirk of the controls that causes a character to stumble or take a few moments to turn around might be fine under normal circumstances, but not when the clock is ticking. Right. Still hear that sound. In other words, Chloe from Uncharted, I have zero time for your rope swinging the wrong way nonsense right now. <sighs> Although I begrudgingly admire your upper body strength. It's secret weapon time. Candy from a baby. When drilling holes into walls, it's important to check that there are no electrical cables behind them. That and to get the permission of whoever owns the wall. Fun fact, I'm now banned from the National Gallery. Apparently you have to be invited to hang your artwork there? Pfft, seems weird to me. In video games, knowing where wires are can be a mission critical thing, rather than just to make sure you don't get electrocuted doing DIY. Often you'll come across a locked door or container and need to use a switch or panel or some such to get it open. Of course, the correct switch isn't always directly adjacent and very rarely is it neatly labelled, so it's up to you to go searching around for the right one. Fortunately for you, no one in video games seems to have invested in wireless technology, meaning that in your exciting hunt for the mysterious correct switch, you already have a lead. Get it? Lead? Because electrical wires are also known as leads, and it's like in an investigation. Hello. What? It's an ele electronics pun. Shut you can't stop. Lead. Lead. Stop. To make it even easier, because you're a video game hero, you probably can see through walls because of magic or because you're a billionaire with a fancy Dracula visor. This reveals the electronics beneath, allowing you to simply follow the path to the correct switch like you're doing the world's least impressive hedge maze. Although I found the one at Hampton Court pretty tricky, so you know, maybe it's for the best. Fun fact, I'm banned from there too. Apparently using a chainsaw is cheating. I say, if they didn't find it in the bag check, that's on them. Scanning for circuitry pops up so often that we feel like some kind of underqualified and over-equipped electrician. Which is what the police called me when they banned me from all power stations nationwide. I don't go out much anymore. The device you are strapped to will twist until your body is broken to stop the device. You must complete the electrical circuit panel. If you do not complete the circuit in time, words will not be able to describe your agony. Game developers really want you to connect with their games. Or I guess connect in their games, since it seems like there's a pathfinding connector puzzle somewhere in every single one. There you'll be having the adventure of a lifetime when suddenly you're stopped in your tracks as you have to slide and swivel a bunch of tiles about in order to create a connecting path between two or more points. Many of them are electricity based, such as this electronic lock in Resident Evil 2. But then you get some like Bioshock's water and pipe based hacking. Safety tip, do not mix those two systems together. 
Some circuit puzzles let you solve them at your leisure as you take a breather from running around and being shot at. Others are timed, becoming a million percent more pressured in the process, like this butt-clenchingly stressful one in Saw. Yeah, alright mate, you shouting at me isn't making this any easier. I prefer the one where I had to saw my foot off. You saw on foot. It was easy. When choosing a pin number, it's important to choose something that's not too obvious, like 1234. How did you get my pin number? Case in point. It's especially important to pick a secure passcode when you're locking away your goodies in a video game safe, where any hero who comes along is absolutely going to be stealing anything that isn't nailed down. It is furthermore of utmost importance that you don't then write said passcode down where it could easily be found by said hero. It's like four numbers! Just memorise it! Apparently though, safe owners in games aren't up to memorising short numerical codes, because whenever there's a combination lock, the code is probably written down somewhere nearby, perhaps in the same room. So all it takes to get the loot out of the locker or safe or what have you is some rooting around until you find it written on the wall or in an email chain or on a sticky note. Pop those numbers in and boom, the goodies are all yours. Easiest puzzle ever. Did you write this? Did you listen to anything that I just said? In 1985, and a plucky young plumber by the name of Mario slammed his head into a square piece of masonry. So began video games' love affair with the block. Today, blocks are still a vital part of video game culture, whether it's building a house out of blocks in Minecraft or blocking yet another stranger on voice chat. Or indeed, in that one bit in every single game where you have to slide blocks around to solve a puzzle. Block sliding puzzles take several forms, but are all brain-meltingly frustrating and are one of the few varieties of video game puzzle where it's possible to get further from your goal the more you try to solve them. Moreover, these object-organising head scratchers have a habit of popping up in games you would never expect. What the hell, Kratos? Why am I playing the world's slowest game of Tetris? I thought God of War was about disemboweling. Promises were made, Kratos. I want those bowels out. Dissimmed. You heard me. The chances of a game featuring a block puzzle are exactly 100%, but if you're especially unlucky, those blocks will be on ice for a frictionless frisson of puzzling irritation. <laughs> Not only are ice block puzzles often incredibly hard, they're one of the few in-game tests of intellect that require you to physically walk your character from one end of the puzzle to the other every time you want to experiment moving a block. The developers presumably having forgotten that life is short and precious. I don't want to spend my valuable time on this earth moving blocks around. I want to spend it disemboweling ancient Greeks, please. Hey, thanks for watching this video about puzzles that turn up in every video game. Andy, I found this puzzle and I can't do it, can you? Oh yeah, okay, so the key to these things is you need to like pop out the bits and then just rearrange them so they're all pro strats there for you. If you want to watch more videos uh, from Outside Extra, you can watch this video, which is about irresponsible uses of time travel powers, or if you want something else, down here is a video from Outside Xbox, which is about the times your safe house became an unsafe house. Oh no, nightmare. So enjoy those and we'll see you next time. Of blocks to pull out.